Let's bring in our friend Jeff Kilberg. He is the chief investment officer of Sanctuary Wealth. And if you remember a few weeks ago when everybody was sort of grim before the Santa Claus rally, Jeff, you came out, you said, folks, stay long, stay strong, and buy the dip. You were right, my friend. Take the victory lap you deserve. Well, thanks so much. Appreciate it. I want to take too big of a victory lap because I've been humbled many times over my 25-year career. But nonetheless, I think the biggest risk we saw in 2021 was not being invested. And when you do see these opportunities, these moments in time where we do have a little bit of fear, we saw the VIX spike, that was the opportunity to stay invested or actually rotate into sectors. And that's been the biggest theme. If we look at yesterday's theme, Sully, what a dispersion between energy and technology. 5%, one of the biggest dispersions. So I think the opportunity in 2022 is that remain constructive and optimistic is the fact that you have to be exposed to certain sectors that are not only going to produce alpha, but you have to stay away from certain sectors. Look at 2021, owning utilities, owning consumer staples, that was a lag to your portfolio. Well, there's no way this pace of the rotation can continue, Jeff. I mean, it's been amazing. The average oil and gas stock's up 10% in two days. I mean, even if you're bullish oil and gas, that's unsustainable. Well, it is Shark Week, Sully, and you can see this, this ro rotation really take a bite out of the stock market. And nonetheless, if we look at the last nice. five years, if you look at the growth versus value, growth is outperformed by over 12%. It's been up 22% versus value, which is about 9.8%. So that in itself, to use another analogy for you, Sully, I know you love these early morning analogies, but think about a race car engine, all that torque that's built up in the system. It has to be released. So I think absolutely you can see more velocity, a more severe sector rotation in the next couple of weeks, because right now in the month of January, people are repositioning. When you see these algorithms come in and really take advantage of this repositioning, you do get acceleration. That type of acceleration can produce a little yeah. bit of of an upset stomach, but nonetheless, it's providing opportunities. So look at some of the names inside of transport. Look at regional banks. Look at semiconductors. We're not throwing away technologies. We just have to be very selective of what technology we want to own for 2022. I'll give you another analogy. The Greenland shark, the world's longest living creature. They'll be 450 years old. They're the slowest swimmers in the ocean. Look it up. It's true. They're about 20 feet long. They barely move. That's why they live so long. When they do, they can move rather quickly if they need to. The point is, that feels like the bond market, Jeff, to me, is that it kind of sat there, and the first two days this year, it moved violently. My point was that the 10-year yield did it. Everything else kind of had to rebalance in its wake. There's no way that 10-year that yield is going to be 2% by the end of next week. That's right. And I believe in bond leadership, right? Let's go back to my decades in the trading pits in Chicago when I traded the 10-year note. I think it's really important to understand that bond leadership. And yes, some people blame that severe move out of technology into energy, into banks yesterday due to the move higher in the 10-year note. But I think you have to look at the context. Look through the proper lens. The 10-year note is still tethered to 1.5%. That's by design. The Federal Reserve does not want to see a 2% or higher interest rate on the 10-year due to the fact that they own so much. The one thing we don't talk enough about is their $9 trillion balance sheet. Therefore, I'm a big believer that we will see the 10-year notes stay subdued, stay under 2%, actually tethered to 1.5%. And that's going to allow not just some of the other stocks, these blue-chip tangible names that people have kind of forgotten about, but it's also technology, but own it in an equal-weighted manner. So yeah. you have to be very strategic on how you own stocks this year. Really critical to performance.